like a um a part two to this so I guess this is like a uh, a, a part two um, I was just on a minute ago and I was talking about how do I know God exists um, so listen to part one and, and I'll just label this part two listen let's get into something else um, I've got I've got I've got a little time this morning let's get into this some of you are going through some things okay whether it be business wise whether it be relationship wise some of you are going through some things and you you we talked about believing in something you have a Christian background normally in the um, african-american urban area which we'll call it for the sake of uh, being brought for the sake of expansion um, we are raised in, in Baptist church or Christianity, something like that, okay? And and as you got older, a lot of information was given to you. A lot of things uh, had you questioned Christianity. A lot of things you went through had you questioned your belief. Listen, we're in a time that you've got to believe something because when you believe, that means that you're governed by those rules. If you believe it, that means that's what you submit to. And if you're not submitting to anything, it's kind of like if you don't stand for something, you'll fall for anything. I'm not pressuring you uh, to go into Christianity. I'm not, I'm not pressuring you to become a part of that. Because like I said in my last video, one plants, one water. God brings the increase. But there is a strength that you need. There is a... Um, a security that you need and we are helpless to one another um, one thing I know about ministry we have a we have a zoom call on Mondays and a zoom call is not about us talking to you as leaders it's not about us talking at you at leaders is it, late leaders it's actually about us allowing you to to talk allowing you to talk about your situation so that we can actually see how the Word of God is applied Sometimes you can go to church and you can get the message and you feel good that day and you revive that day and we talked about this too. And then the rest of the week you don't have a clue what to do or the next month you don't have a clue what to do. So when we allow you to talk, when we allow you to share, that's how we're able to know what needs to be applied. That's how we're able to share our testimonies. That's why we're able to help one another. Sometimes you'll be helped not just by a leader in a church, by somebody else giving their testimony. So today, I just want you to... we. You know, everybody's so focused on, uh, are you a Christian? Are you a Muslim? Are you a Hebrew Israelite? It, all this fighting going on about where you belong. Well, I don't I don't believe the Bible because it was written by my man. So was uh, the dictionary that you believe every definition in the word that is placed there written by man. We could be talking gibberish and written by man, but it's become our our common use of language. Uh, it's been we we use Webster's dictionary, we use those things, and it's written by man. Okay, um, the textbooks that some of you have your you have your degrees, you got your degrees in college, and you have those degrees, and the books that you learned out of were written by man, and you took them as you took them as knowledge. So that's going to be a choice of yours, but you have to you're going to have to believe in something. And in, and once you do, it's not a debate. Once you do, it's not something that you fight about. Once you do, it's not something so to where we can we can cause division amongst us. What we do, we bring to the table. We bring to the table what we have, we share it and and, and we become helpless to one another. Okay? We become helpless to one another. So listen. Today I know there are a lot of things, a lot of things that we are going through, especially if you, some of you are not going through anything personally, but you're just watching what's going on in the world and it's disheartening. You're watching what's going on in the world and it's depressing. Uh, that is your oppression, just watching what's going on in the world. Listen, 
we have to do mental exercises, okay? And and I and I have to do them every day. I have to practice every day. It's just like physical exercises. You may feel a little good, but after so long of not taking care of your body, you begin to feel the difference. And the difference starts inside and then begins to show on the outside. So when you're not beginning to, your mind has to become strong. We Everything that the enemy does, the enemy meaning anything that's oppressing you, anything that's against what God desires for you, okay? Not the, not the devil with the red horns, but the oppression, the oppressor, what is oppressing you, okay? The first thing that he does is attack your mind. The seed is placed in, the thought is placed in, and then you run with that. You begin to how you depending on how you perceive it is how you move is how your your soul is 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 affected okay if you perceive it wrongly your soul is your emotions your soul is your character I'm trying to get you to understand this if you and some of you already know it if you already know it it's not for you but then once that thought is put in your soul is affected once your soul is affected that's when you begin to move naturally you begin to move physically so everything starts at the base of your mind. I've got a little time today. Everything starts at the base of your thought process. You've got to begin to exercise your mind. When I say exercise your mind, begin to train your mind to come out of that default thinking of negativity. The enemy has placed the default in. I need you to put new information in. I did a teaching on that. Listen, what happens is when you get up in the morning, let me let me give you by example how this works. Okay? I'm gonna give you I'm gonna give you an example of how this works because a number of you uh when I'm saying something is you, you, you don't really get it and if you don't get it and you don't ask any questions then, then it'll just pass by you. But this can be beneficial to you. You get up in the morning and when you get up in the morning you are depressed. You are heavy. I'm using an example now. This doesn't mean this is who you are. I'm just using it as an example. Okay. One second, I'm, I'm right here with you. Now we're here together. I told you I got time this morning. I got time. This is just for you. Just for those of you who need it. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I didn't even I didn't even realize that I would be on here uh, doing anything this morning. I was on my way to do something else. Um... You wake up in the morning. We're doing an exercise today. So come on, join in. Call somebody to join in because we're going to do a little session here. You wake up in the morning and you wake up and you're depressed. You wake up and you're heavy. Or you wake up and you decide today is just like every other day and you're frustrated because it's just like the days begin to run on. There's no excitement. There's no joy. There's no peace. When you wake up in the morning, you have things presented to you in your mind. Things presented to you about what's going on. Things presented to you about what's going on in your life. About what happened yesterday. Things in the past. The first thing I want you to do since we were on here this morning. The first thing I want you to do is decide what you're going to accept. If you're going to, if you're feeling some type of way about yesterday, I want you to right now reject that. Yesterday is gone. You cannot repeat yesterday. You cannot change what happened on yesterday. You can only make decisions for today. I want you to recognize and accept that today is a brand new day. Today is a brand new day. It's not yesterday and we have yet to get to tomorrow. It's a brand new day. But your tomorrow is affected by the choice you make today. You cannot affect anything in the past. It's gone. So I need you to stop carrying the bags and the weight of yesterday. You said something you weren't supposed to say, you already said it. You did something you weren't supposed to do, you already did it. If somebody is going to try to bring it back to you, people try to remind you of what you did wrong, people try to throw in your face what's happening yesterday, people even remind you of your situations. Well, girl or boy or man, what are you going to do? Uh, this is this, this, this. They try to lay it before you and don't know that they're being used by an oppressive spirit. I don't need you to remind me about what's already evident and before me. I don't need you. If you're asking me, let me, let me stop here and add this in. Let me stop and add this in because this is important. This is important. You're going to get a lot of nuggets and I hope that you take this in stride. Um, people come and ask you 
Well, what are you going to do? I want you to start sourcing people. I want you to start looking at the source and asking yourself, what is the point of what they're asking me? Well, what am I going to do? How is what I'm going to do going to affect you? That's number one. How is what I'm going to do going to affect you? The other thing. Are you going to be a part of the solution or are you trying to be a part of the solution? If not, then we should not be discussing what I'm going to do. I don't need you to put it before me. Because when you put it before, before me, you put it before me with your perception. When I, I decide how I'm going to perceive it, sometimes people can come in and bring the worst of the worst. Sometimes, depending on who you're talking to, now there's some people who want you to see the light of it. Let those people in. Let those people who listen, they got a positive way. They got a way out. They have an exit strategy. They have something beneficial that's causing you to grow or evolve out of that situation. That's totally different. But start to source people. Why are they asking me this? And people will use, listen, I'm tired of default. Uh, default answers, default thinking, default character that is negative. People will say, I'm only asking because I'm concerned about you. If you're concerned about me, pray. If you're concerned about me, help me with the solution. But just asking me just so you can know, what are you going to do with the information that I'm giving you? Because your life is so valuable, because what you're going through, your processes, your trials, your, tribu your tribulations are so important to, to, to your life. You need to be careful about who you're giving information to. You take it lightly. When people used to call me and say, hey, where you at? I always want to know. And, and I may seem anal, but I always want to know. Why do you want to know where I am? What do you need? Do you need me to come to you? Just ask me the question. I need you to come do this. Are you available to come do this? Would you like to go do this? Instead of, where you at? You don't need that much. That was, that was me. I was training people not to be so privy, not to be so comfortable being, being privy to my life, to my personal life. Now, you can handle yours the way you want, but in this warfare, listen, we are strategists. And you've got to understand. So let's talk about those people. You've got to understand they are those people that affect that seed that's been planted in your head. Get up in the morning. Decide what you're going to accept. I'm not going to accept yesterday's feelings for today. That's why some of you feel like it's a cycle continuously going on. Because you're accepting yesterday's situation as today's situation. You be, you're becoming a repeat offender. You're accepting what happened yesterday. I felt this way and I feel this way again because it's the, the same thing. It's not the same day. The world is not moving the same as it did yesterday. Everything in today is different than yesterday. I know it doesn't look like it. I know it doesn't feel like it. But everything is different. There will not be a rewind. Even if you do the same thing, if you, get in, if you walk out the door and get in your car every day, just like clockwork, you won't walk the same. You won't step in the same path as you did yesterday. You, won't, you will not duplicate anything exactly the same as yesterday. So stop accepting yesterday as your norm for today. Okay? That's the first thing. Then decide. Accept, then decide. Decide what you want today, today to look like. You act as if you don't have the capability to make choices for you. Decide you're not going to let this affect you. Decide you're going to be happy anyway. Make a decision. Now some of you are saying, Apostle, that sounds good. And that sounds like it's easy, but it's not as easy said as done, as easy as uh, done as said. Listen, I want to give you some examples. Your bills are due. So you're stressed out. You're worried. You're trying to figure out what to do about certain things that need to be paid. Does your worrying make your bills not due? Does your anxiousness Make your bills not do. 
when you decide that you're going to have joy what you are doing is you are taking possession of the quality a better quality of life for yourself and when you're able to do that that energy actually draws in solutions it actually draws in what you need but you can't draw in what you need because you're upset about something you can't do anything about relationships some of you got a bad relationship going on you're in love you can't go you can't leave something ain't right you don't know if you should be here whatever it is in that relationship maybe it's not in you to leave today maybe you don't want to leave but you want it fixed but either way, today, you being depressed about it, you being disgusted about it, you talking and venting about it all day is not going to create change. Energy creates change. So when you move, that's your energy. When you make a move, that's your energy. So you've got to get your mind in a mindset that you're going to make positive moves so that you can bring in positive results. You can't control anybody else's actions. You can feel the way you want to feel, think the way you want to think, and you still can't control anybody else's actions. If somebody's going to be mad at you, there's nothing you can do about that. You can make a decision. I'm going to apologize. I'm going to do better. And they can choose to accept it or not. But if they don't choose it, you can't make that dictate your life. So all of this comes into a mindset. I want to talk to you about that today because I want us as saints, I want us to stop living raggedy. Whoever you are, I want us to stop living raggedy. Listen, I've lived raggedy for a long time. I'm an emotional person, so I'm very in tune with my emotions. So things hurt me. I feel very deeply about things. And when that happens, that affects how I move. Or should I say it affects how I don't move? Because when I'm heavy, when I'm depressed, I get stagnated. You've got to begin to govern how you live and think about this life. You've got to begin to govern your thought process. That is, that is the source of the issue. That is the problem. You're heavy right now. Decide. I'm going to be happy. Decide. No, it's not easy. I am not telling you that it's easy. But the more you do it, it becomes easy. Just like exercise. The more you do it, it's not as painful. The more you do it, it becomes easier. The more you do it, you can lift up heavier things. The more you do it, you begin to see the results of it. It is the same thing. The more you begin to change your thought process, it becomes easier. The more you begin to change it, you begin to be able to think better in even greater situations. The more that you do it, you begin, it begins to show on the outside and the evidence begins to show in your life and the things that are happening. Listen, if I told you all what went on behind this camera, if I told you all what went on in my lifestyle, there are some that are connected to me that they know. It seems like I'm Dennis the Menace. Something is always happening. Something is always going on. And, and, and people will say, if you, how, how, do, how do you think God loves you with all the stuff that goes on with me? I know it. I know it and I don't allow my mind to think anything else. I don't allow my mind to accept anything else. And that's how he becomes my provision. That's how he becomes my shield. That's how he becomes my lifter up of my head because I make a decision. I made a decision. That's one thing that I made a decision a long time ago that God was the sovereignty of my life. Now that, in the midst of all my bad thinking, has caused me to survive. But I don't want to just survive. How many of you don't want to just survive? How many of you are tired of just surviving? Some of you are just existing. It's like you're a person on a respirator. You are just existing, but you are not really living. You are not really living because of the way that you think. You are not really living because you're allowing other people's thoughts to govern you. I've had a position where I've owed somebody something. And I owed them something and they saw me on, on social media and I was having lunch. And they didn't know that somebody had blessed me with the lunch. They didn't know that somebody had bought the lunch for me. And in their mind they were, how are you able to do this and you owe me? 
So I felt some type of way about sharing the fact. When I do something good, I felt something, uh, some type of way about sharing the, the fact that I was living today, that the quality of my life wasn't bad for that day. I felt some type of way about that, about sharing the fact the quality of my life wasn't shabby that day. I was sharing with the people, just expressing, look at God. Thank you, God. She didn't realize that day why she was complaining about what I owed her. She didn't realize that day that I didn't have money to eat. She didn't realize because my hair was combed, because it didn't show on the outside. She didn't realize my lack. She wanted me to live in a way that looked like I was going through something. But I refused to do that because that wasn't going to draw anything in. I put myself together. I combed my hair and somebody blessed me with breakfast. Then somebody blessed me with lunch. She didn't know that I just didn't even have food to eat. I didn't have to post that on Facebook. I don't have food to eat. Stop letting people govern your lives. By their thoughts of how you should live. Stop letting people govern your thought process by their thoughts. They don't know what you go through. They don't know what your heart is saying. Some of you want to really do good for some people and you've done some wrong. And they just put you in this box of you just a wrong person. But your heart really wants to do good. But you can't change it. It's nothing you can do. You're in your process and you're trying to come out of your process. And you're having mental battles and you're having emotional battles. And they don't see that all they know is what you, what they perceived as what you did to them. And if somebody has done something to you on the other end, I need you to change your perception of it. If they did do something the wrong way, I need you to just say, listen, God is my redeemer. God is my justifier. It is well. That's between them and God. I need you to stop taking it personally. I need you to stop. You don't know other people's situation. I need you to have some grace and have some mercy for other people too. It's all about what's up here. What are you thinking? I want you to share. If you don't want to share it on Facebook, you can inbox me or anything. Share what your thoughts are. Let's see if we can process through those thoughts. Listen, one thing about in the African American community, we don't like counseling. We don't like to go to psychiatrists. We thought that was another uh, 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 another racist thing that they did. We didn't. I'm trying to say that nicely. We thought that wasn't for us. But our counselors were grandma, our counselors were the pastor, our counselors were our friend that didn't know too much more than what we knew. But sometimes there has to be a mediator to help you walk through these thoughts. To help you process through these thoughts. So if you're having some thoughts and you know that they're not the thoughts that you should have, then you need to share. I didn't even know I was going here today. Then you need to share with somebody. And not just anybody, not those people who are presenting to you with no solution, who are presenting to you with no edification, presenting to you and they don't play any part except for collecting information, not those people. You need to talk to someone who has some wisdom, who has your best, best, best interest at heart. And I don't mean just by words. I don't mean because I care about you, because I love you. It's so easy to say I love you. Listen, I love you because we're kindred. I love you because I know those of you that's going through, I know how it hurts. I know how the enemy drags us. I know how it feels to be lingering in, in long suffering. I know how it feels. So I love you because I need to love on you because you need the love. That's why when I come on here and I say that I love you, I love you because I know what it felt like when I was laying alone in a hole and people were judging me and people were giving their opinions and nobody was really helping. They were just deciding for me who I was and what I was going to be and what I was going to do. They just decided for me. So I send out love to you because you need it. This is genuine love. That's why I say come in the box, email me, whatever you need to do because let's process through these thoughts. It's moment by moment. You may have to do it again the next day. I've had people that will say I'll labor with you. Then after so long of me going through that crazy stuff, they got worn out. They didn't want to labor with me no more. They didn't want to see it to the end. So when you're in those situations, listen, you get you somebody that'll help you out. But you also begin to exercise that mind 
If you can't do anything but change your mind for five minutes, begin to change your mind for five minutes. That's how I used to do the treadmill. I would get on for five minutes, then finally ten minutes, then I pushed myself to thirty minutes, then I finally got to an hour. I didn't go no further than an hour, but then I find, but I did do my four miles. Now, this look at this. I didn't do more than an hour on the treadmill, but I was able to do more in a different atmosphere. Maybe you need to shift your atmosphere so you can think differently. For me, I go. I go and get something to eat. I go outside and I walk. I do something to shift my atmosphere so that I can help this mind think differently. I told my sons, I took my sons into a wealthy neighborhood. And I showed them houses and I did the calculations. And I said, well, listen, this you can have for $300 a day. That's what that is. That's $300 a day. So you can make, if you work together, both of you can get $300 a day and you can live better. I, I showed them that because I can't get up and I didn't want them to get up every day just looking at provision like that was the end. Some of you are getting up every morning and you're looking at the provision. Provision. You're looking at what God has blessed you with the roof over your head, the job that you have, the relationship you're in. You're looking at the provision and you're thinking that that's all that there is and that's why you're depressed. And your mind is allowing you to stay there because you can't see anything further. Maybe you need to change your atmosphere so you can go a little further. Go outside. Go into a wealthy neighborhood. Watch a love, a love movie. Do something that causes your mind to think differently. Stop settling. You are waddling. You're waddling in mud. You're what matter of fact, you're not waddling in mud. You're waddling in quicksand. Because as you think those thoughts, you're steady going down further. Your finances are, your relationship is, your emotions are, you're steady going down for, further. Mental instability is so common right now. Some of you are stark crazy and don't even realize it and won't accept it right now. I've been there, been a darn fool, been unstable, felt like if you give me one more thing, I'm going to break. And of late, and as of late. But I had to talk to myself, nah, this is not my portion. I had to talk to myself and go under the see what I see see what I mean about you have to have something you're governed over you you submit to I submit to the word of God so there was a word that was something for me to go to I went to the word of God and he said he didn't give me a spirit of fear but of power love and a sound mind I need I felt I knew I had power I fight every day I knew that I knew I had love because I love when they don't love me but he said he gave me sound mind. So if I don't have it, there's an attack somewhere. Under this law, I'm supposed to have sound mind. Under these principles, I'm supposed to have sound mind. So because I submit to this governing, I am privy to it. I'm supposed to have it by law. So I was able to go retrieve it by changing my thought process. Hey, it seemed like I bounced somewhere on this video. It seemed like I bounced from one thing to another. It started out with somebody coming for my head on TikTok talking about how do I know God exists and the Ruach, and Ruach I'm sorry, the spirit and the breath of life. How do I know this? I need to go study this. It started out like that. Listen, I don't have to argue with you. I am, I am trying to live. I'm not debating with you about what you believe because I am existing. I am thriving. I am trying to help others to thrive. Everything else is, is, is unimportant. It's irrelevant. What you believe, you can have it. What I believe, I'm going to keep it. But change your mindset. Change your mind about your life. Change your mind about how you see today. I know it looks jacked up. Some of you, listen, my car blew up on the expressway. I had no, I, no car. Now, some of you don't got a way to get around. Some of you don't have a place to live. Change your mindset. You better start looking at the glass half full, but I'm here. Instead, we're steady saying, I wish I wasn't here because it's so bad. And yes, there are some days that I still get that. I get up like, what am I doing this for, Lord? What is the point, God? Sometimes I feel like that because that's the seed that the oppressor starts me with. So I have to come back with a, 
Because I'm wonderfully made, I have to come back with the because I'm important. I have to come back with the because I'm necessary. I have to come back with the because I'm not done with what I'm supposed to do. I have to come back with the I have not gotten everything that God says I'm supposed to get. I have to come back with the I have not gotten everything that I desire yet. So I have to come back with the since I'm still here, all of that is still available. There's still a chance that I could get all of that. So I look at that glass half full. Why am I here? How about thank you that I'm here? How about thank you that I have another opportunity? How about thank you with me being here? I'm open to opportunities, blessings, and level increases and elevations. How about thank you? When you don't feel like it, and this is not something you do when you feel like it. Because it doesn't attack you when you feel like it. Right now, why you don't feel wealthy, you better start speaking. I'm here today, so there's opportunity for me to get wealth. Because the word of God also says he gave me the power to get wealth. I have power to get wealth. You better get up and think about that relationship and say, okay, if you want to stay in it, this can be better. Anybody can change. So, Lord, I put them before you. And God, if it's me, show me me. You better start speaking and doing some work. Don't get settled in the mindset of the oppressor. Don't get settled in the seeds that the oppressor is putting in your mind. This is how your life going to always be. Oh, you a lie. God didn't wake me up every day for my life to just be like this. He's too innovative for my life to be the same every single day. Are we going in cycles? Yes, we're going in cycles because of our mindset. Because believe me, he gave you so much power. Let me tell you the greatest power that God gave you. Choice. Free will. For those of you who want to slam down people and cast out demons and all that good stuff, all that's wonderful. But beyond that, free will. Your ability to choose is the most powerful thing that you have. So that is why the enemy attacks your mind because he knows that it's your choice. He knows that you have the right to choose. He knows that nobody can take you out but you. So he's working every day for you to take yourself out. Some of you are contemplating suicide but you've already committed spiritual suicide because you've counted yourself out. But isn't it awesome that we serve a resurrecting God? Isn't it awesome that we have the same power to raise the dead? Let the first dead that you raise be yourself. Let the first person that you speak life to be yourself. Begin to speak life to your dreams, to your visions. I see some of my classmates. I went to Beasley. I see some of my classmates on here. And I see, listen, when we were little, we were in class. I see some of the people from Princeton. That's where I was raised. When we were little, we had dreams. We had ideas. We had a purpose. We had a way that we thought things were going to be. And now that we're older, all of those things went away. And some fool, we let some fool, and yes, I said some fool, whether it be you being the fool or somebody around you being the fool, we let some fool convince us that those things are not obtainable. Why did I say fool? Because it's foolish to believe that and you serve an all-powerful God. It's foolish to believe that there's anything that you can't obtain and you exist. You with a body that regenerates itself, cells that regenerate itself, you that can create things, you that created the buildings, God used it, he put that information in your head and you were the architect for the buildings, you who produced babies, you you had babies, you, you made love and you had, well you did whatever, and babies came out, you who birthed out babies, you who laid your hands to things but you let somebody foolish tell you that what we dreamed and what we desired is no longer obtainable why is it not so like I said I didn't mean to even get on here with this this was the part two to something that started on TikTok but here I am change your mind Right now, whatever it is that you're thinking that's negative, change your mind. Some of you are in ministry. I'm in ministry, and sometimes I look at it. I went from I went from one time having nobody in the room, preaching to chairs, having a room where I said we're gonna have to get a bigger church to back to one back to one member. I went that way, and it was like, God, what are you doing? 
What am I doing this for? What am I on the prayer line every week for? What am I teaching on Facebook for? What am I making the videos for? What am I sharing this for? And he said, just keep being faithful. He's strategizing. Just keep being faithful. So I had to get in my mind, I'm doing it unto the Lord. I had to change the way I perceive this. This is unto the Lord. I'm doing it. I had to change the way I thought about it, the way I saw it. I'm doing it to the, unto the Lord. Some of you have heard me tell the story. I had a whole lot of money a long time ago. When I say a whole lot, a whole lot. And then for 15, sorry, 17 years now, 17 years, it's been up, down, up, down. I've been broke. I've been homeless multiple times. And, and, and there are people who have, since it's been so long, have counted me out. There are people who wanted to put me in a line of a sheet. That's a bum. You're a bum. I had a husband. I was married before. And the husband told me, you're not eating. There's nothing on your plate. Degrading me. Making me feel smaller. I had to make a decision in my mind first that I am everything that God called me to be. I had to make a decision in my mind that even though things look like they're lost, I have lost nothing. I had to make that decision in my mind. I've decided who I am. i decided who I will serve. I've decided my positioning in this life. Make a decision about you. Get up out that bed. Get up out that funk. Make a decision today. Change your way you perceive it. If you're sitting around talking about how bad people do you, change the way you perceive that. You're sitting around thinking about how bad people have done you. You cannot change how it's been done, but you can change moving forward. You can say, listen, the reason they were able to is because I have a heart like mine. My heart is valuable. My heart is pure. That's just the type of person that I am. I'm no fool. They didn't make a fool out of me. It's because I have purity of heart. Whatever your issue is today, and I'm going to get off. Whatever your issue is today. Change the way you think about it. My, it. my Today, I'm not losing. I'm not losing anything. I don't care about if you take the materialistic stuff. That doesn't make me lose the fact that, listen, just because something materialistic was taken from you, that doesn't change you being a boss. It doesn't change you being an entrepreneur. It doesn't change you being a man or woman of God. The stuff didn't make you. You made the stuff. You brought the value to the stuff. The stuff didn't bring the value to you. So whatever it is that you lose, don't start devaluing yourself because you lost it. If it's a person that's gone, don't start devaluing yourself because they're gone. You are still who God says that you are. And you make that decision that that's what it is. You're still going to have what God says you're going to have. You're still going to have the desires of your heart according to his riches and glory. I have to say that because some of your desires are not lining up with the word. So that's why you don't have it. But that's another teaching. So change your mind on this morning. Refuse to be in that funk. Refuse to accept that negativity. Refuse to accept that loss. No matter how these people come at you. No matter how people with anxiety try to shift you. Even if you listen. Even if you owe them. Even if you did something to them. Listen. Apologize. Do what you can to them as far as you is naturally. Pray for them at the end of the day. But don't take their perception of you on as what your value is. So. I usually do quickies. I didn't mean to be on this long. I just want you to change your thought process. Begin right now to shift how you're thinking about what's negative. Begin right now how to shift what's going on in your life. This is not the end. Do you think this is the expected end that God has for you? This is not the end. I'm up and sometimes I'm up and don't know what to do. And I'll feel some type of way because I like to know what I'm doing. I don't know what to do. But what I do is I trust you God. I don't know why things go badly, but when they go badly, what I do know is that you're, you're giving me an expected end. You have, you have a desire that I not perish. That is the thought process that I accept for my life. 
He cares that my soul prospers. So he wants me to be happy. You are around here and some of you have no joy. You are just existing. You're dragging your way through life. You don't laugh anymore. You don't crack a joke. You're serious about everything. You're down in the dumps. Listen, baby, he said the joy of the Lord is my strength. So I have joy in the fact that he is my provider. Joy in the fact that he is my source. Joy in the fact that no matter what it looks like, even if there are doors that I open, the expect it in his grace and his mercy is sufficient I have joy in the fact that I don't have to stay this way but you will only not stay that way if you change your mind change your mind about the thing so it ain't Monday it's Thursday it's not even a day that I come on but I like to be led by the spirit didn't know we were going this way but baby think different Think differently. Change your mind. No, it's not easy. It's a battle. It's just like going to that gym. I don't want to go to that gym, but these arms is waving at people. So I don't want to go to that gym, but I am going to have to begin to do something because I want change. And it's only going to be a little at first. It's only going to probably be five minutes, and then I'm going to increase it. Today, if you can't do anything but change your thought process for five minutes, change it. Then tomorrow, push for six minutes, and then the next day, push for more minutes until your default thinking is I'm winning I can't lose that's my word for today and guess what I say it with confidence I say it with truth I love you I love you I love you because I understand you I love you because I have to give off love and I that's a part of me it's a it's a part of what makes me who I am I have to love on people so I love you I love you so you have a great day